Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Around South Jersey. I'm Jim Quinn. I've got two very special guests with me tonight, John and Lisa Dingle. They are the pastors at uh, First Assembly of God Church, one of the prettiest churches in town, and two very nice people. Nice to have you guys with us today. Thank you, John and Lisa, for coming in. Thanks for having us. My pleasure. You, uh, uh, Before we start the show, though, I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you who my very, very favorite parishioner is at your church. Who's that? Mm. Now, you think. I, I, taught, I used to teach at Millville Junior High. Yes, I know who you're talking about. <laughs> that would be the wonderful Miss Luella Dreyer. Isn't she amazing? Yeah. Is she 101, 102? 102. 102 now. Yeah. And as sharp as a tack. Absolutely. And my, my kids were not good with math, so they had to go to Mrs. Dreyer all the time for <laughs> tutoring. So I used to go by her house at least once a week and say hello. And what a super lady I got to work with her. And, She's just amazing, you know. Yeah. But that's, I think that's typical of many of the people you have at your church. You've got a lot of people that have been there for a long, long time, don't you? Yeah, thankfully. And uh, we're thankful for the heritage that's there and for uh, Pastor Kenyon's leadership, Pastor Joe's leadership over the years. And we're glad to be able to step in these last five years. Yeah, well, it's great to have you guys there for the past five years. And we are talking about growing. The nice thing is you've been able to uh could keep a lot of the people that Pastor Ken and Pastor Green had, but you've also drawn your own group as well. And I want to tell you something, folks, that nobody, nobody in South Jersey does except for First Assembly of God in Millville. Every Sunday at 11 o'clock until 1230, you can see them on Channel 190. Channel 190 hits over a quarter of a million homes in South Jersey. Of course, as we all know, Facebook is another great way to mm -hmm. To you know, connect with people also, but I want to thank you for that, and and that, you know, it's given people. My sister, in fact, lives in North Cape May, and she enjoys watching the program. She says, "How, how did I get on down here?" I said, "Well, <laughs> they got the big channel. It's uh, it is it's cha Comcast Cable Channel One Ninety, and it's eleven o'clock to twelve thirty every Sunday." And who's the young man that helps produce that? Uh, he's our. Uh Associate Pastor Tim Schley. That's it. I do remember yeah. we talked about. We've had great success. Tim's been helpful, too. That's mm -hmm. worked out. Anyway, we are here to talk about Welcome to Hope Day. Tell me a little bit. When did Hope Day start? I'm going to let you go ahead and answer, hon. Well, do you mean when did it start in Millville? Yes. Or when did it, yeah, the, I guess when. The movement start. Well, let's – First, when did the movement start? Okay, so it was about eight to ten years ago. Um, the Hope Day Network was actually birthed. I don't know if you're familiar with Convoy of Hope. Um, it's a missions arm of the Assemblies of God, and they respond to crises throughout the country and the world. And um, Pastor Steve Malazzo, a pastor in New York, um, just began connecting and doing outreaches with Convoy of Hope locally just to meet you know needs and things that were happening, you know, you know, right in the in your hometown kind of thing and so they began having these hope day events and be they began to start to empower other churches and teach other churches how to do these events and as of last year in 2021 there were 36 sites that um, held hope days in their town um, which is pretty exciting and so about five years ago we brought hope day to millville um, oh. when my husband and i first were you know new to the area and driving around we saw that field you know over there at dock and foundry and just sort of both felt in our hearts that would be a great place to to just set up an event that where we could just love our neighbors and then we heard about the hope day network and i we connected with them and they sort of um did some training and and, and coaching us of how to you know create a hope day event through partnering with local churches and community agencies to to create an event you know for our community so our first one was in 2019 and it was a, uh, a festival format and we had about um is it 800 wow a little over 900 people 900 guests of that's honor fantastic. come on the field and that that's what we call everybody who comes on the field uh -huh. our guests of honor oh, and we super. when they arrive we just want them to feel loved and cared about and meet them you know with, with practical means well you don't know how much that means to me i was the mayor of millville when that there was a development there called millville gardens mm -hmm. and it was a very difficult area uh we averaged a police call every day at mm -hmm. millville gardens so we decided it was time to take that down you know it had been 
let go and everything like that. And I thought, what's going to ever happen there? And this mm-hmm. is so wonderful to see mm-hmm. that something you had nine, over 900 people who certainly were welcome guests, but they needed these services or they wanted to have some entertainment, some music and things like that. So that's wonderful. And a personal note, right across the street, there's a house, 117 Foundry Street was my aunt and uncle, and I, they were sort of like my second parents, so I really know the neighborhood well. Mm-hmm. And that's nice to be able to see that. Now, who who helps out with it? Just your church, or do you have others? It's you know? definitely a team effort. We are the, the lead you know, facilitator, <laughs> the lead sponsor, and but we one of the you know, the, the vision of Hope Day is that it's also representation of unity, you know, and unity amongst different churches, no matter what denomination. And so um, we've had um, First United Methodist join us, uh, Church of the Nazarene, uh, I have my little list here, um, New Jerusalem Baptist is joining us this year, um, New Life Church is joining us, um, we also have Positive Vibes, you know, with JT sure, yeah. uh, Burks, and also Rise and Shine uh, Ministries with Sean Connors. We all work together, you know, to um, to you know create this event and provide you know resources, free items, a kid zone, just a place where folks can come out and you know enjoy their day. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah, and I think to to add to what Lisa said, too many times the church has been known for what it's against. And one of the hearts that we have for Millville is we want the people in Millville to know what the church is for. You know, to care for people, to love our neighbor. And Hope Day is an opportunity for us not to highlight a church, but to highlight the church, which is like the the collective group of believers, to let people know that, you know, we care about them. That is wonderful. I really, in fact, the thing that Sean Connor has, uh, when I was going to First Methodist, Steve Schuster, I mentioned to you earlier, was there many years ago, and I sat there one day, and his message to us was, look around this church. He said, you don't see our neighbors in here, do you? And you know, it's all white people and everything like that. So he started a program called Shine, which then eventually is going in, I think, to what uh, Shaw does now as well. And then it was funny, too, so it was George, I forget George's last name, but he was at Trinity Methodist, and I was there one Sunday, and he was talking about the same thing, reaching out in our neighborhood, help our people you know, get them as part of the Sunday school program and, you know, bring them in to the church. And that's what I see from your church, from first, uh, from uh, Reverend Meyer's church. It's, it is what the city is like. It's, it's real people. It's, it's good people that, you know, can use a hand, let, you know, some help every once in a while. But, but there's a lot of great people at your church. There really are, you know, and again, that's a tribute to both of you for what you're reaching out. You're not just sitting back and, you know, just going through the motions. You really care about your people and the whole, all the people in the community, which is a fantastic situation. Wow. So now in 2019, okay, then we had the COVID. Mm. Did that mess you up for a couple of years? Or? Yeah, it did. It, did. Yeah. it changed things. It did yeah. change things. We, um, in 2020, we had to like regroup, you know, because everything changed, you know, in March of 2020, and we moved back our Hope Day event to August, and we sort of pivoted, as you know, most of the world did. Um, we pivoted and we did like a drive-through event, so um, that was just an opportunity for folks to come and just, you know, we sort of put things in their trunk and they kept kept on going, and we were able to provide resources for them. Um, and then also in um, 2021, we sort of merged to more of like a hybrid, like with people could drive through but they could also walk on the field and we offered a little bit you know more uh, resources and more things that people could pick up so we did have to shift gears quite a bit but we're, we're really happy this year that we are going back to more of a festival format with a full kid zone and um, we're even going to have again um, like we did in year one this big circus tent Oh, and, and under the circus tent is going to be housed um, all of our community um, services. So um, those are going to be, um, we'll have tables and booths set up, booths set up from, I have a few school-based youth services, uh, and Spear is going to be coming. I did see that. Complete yeah, Care, great. Salvation Army, Mrs. M's Books, and others. You know, there's still some last-minute details coming together and some folks, you know, jumping on board still um, for that day. Um, we'll be having eyeglass adjustments. Um, so 
So that tent will be a place where people can really come and get, you know, some good hands-on practical resources, you know, just for their daily lives. That's fantastic. That really is. It's just, well, I'll tell you what, I got a lot of comments already. You guys are popular here. <laughs> uh, Tamara Hunter says, yay. And uh, awesome. hi, guys. We've got uh, whoosh, 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 you know, that type of <laughs> awesome lady. See you June 4th. Uh, welcome. Wonderful woman. I guess that was, it's not you, John. No, it's not me. <laughs> and Hope Day is so wonderful. And uh, it's been Judy. neat as we've been there. You, you know, you know, on a regular basis, the, the folks in the community, you know, now are starting to, you know, they anticipate that we're going to be coming back each year. So it's fun to build those relationships. Well, one of my friends, Debbie Smith Baumgartner, said, "That's my pastor and his wife, <laughs> hard up and all that." Stuff. Stuff. There you go. Say, no wonder I like Debbie so much. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Bam is watching. So Mrs. Mm -hmm. Judith Breeden McFarland. So it's nice to see. That, that's what's neat with Facebook. You get the input and you know, really you know the numbers at the end of the night and that type of thing. This was interesting. I can't tell you uh, how many people are watching right now on Channel 22. There's no Nielsen rating. I, I can't do that. So all those years, I mean, we had success, John, like I was telling you and Lisa, when I ran that auction time show, we sold hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of merchandise. I knew there were people out there, but then you guys probably weren't even in school. The, the <laughs> uh, what do you call it? <laughs> there were only 12 channels. <laughs> so right. I, right? I dominated I one out of 12. Days. Now there's 312 or 512 <laughs> or whatever it is. But it, what, I guess my point was this year we did the Millville High School football Mm -hmm. Of course, they won the championship, mm -hmm. and afterwards we checked our YouTube and our Facebook, and we had over a quarter of a million viewers wow. on for well, there were twelve games, so about ten thousand or no, twenty thousand a game actually. So yeah. it, it's neat to be able to get the input from that as well, as I know you guys understand. Oh yeah, yeah. Minerva Alvarado says hello, <laughs> and Minerva, let me know if there's any update. I don't know if you're familiar with Rick Morales. Rick was a Millville police officer, wonderful gentleman. He was, he was like, worked with the youth a lot. And I've known Rick since he was a little boy, he played Little League Baseball and things when I was coaching. And uh, Rick, unfortunately, is really in bad shape with mm. a liver problem. And all he needs is somebody between the ages of 20 and 40 to donate a little piece of their liver to help regrow wow. his liver. So we did a show on it. I know the radio station did one and stuff. But so if anybody, as we're talking mm. about this, yeah. if God blesses you to do that, yours regrows. It's just a small little section of the liver that they take, and it would help save his life. So it's some, oh. something that's very, very special. And Minerva is one of the people. She's his cousin, and she was helping a lot. And mm -hmm. Teresa Sutton said, Lisa and John, hope your day rocks. That's great. <laughs> Thanks, Teresa. <laughs> See, I'm telling you, you guys are becoming so popular in five years. <laughs> Wait till you've been here as long as Reverend Kenyon. They'll oh, say, wow. you. <laughs> wow. He, did I just see he turned 91? Yes, he did. Yeah. He's amazing, isn't he? Yeah, and he doesn't stop. He just no. goes and goes and goes. Bunny. Yes, he is, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, a lot of the, when, I, when I was a county commissioner, he was on a lot of boards. He's heads up mm -hmm. this and heads up that. <laughs> and police, he's there wherever you are. He's you're right. He is the energizer bunny, and that's yeah. what's keeping him so young. Mm -hmm. This was funny too. One Christmas parade, and again, as you can see, the people message. Mm -hmm. I got a message from a woman from Ecuador that was watching the parade. Yeah, we know <laughs> who that who might that have was. been. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and and actually, her dad was a grand marshal. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I said, see, we have viewers in Ecuador. I've had them in Germany. I've had them in Italy. <laughs> it's That's what's neat. You get that full. I mean, you guys are hitting a quarter of a million in South Jersey, but with Facebook, you can hit the whole world as right. well. <laughs> you never know where you'll get the people. Anyway, we're talking with John and Lisa Pringle, uh, Dingle, rather, with the First Assembly of God Church, and we're talking about Hope Day, a free community event, June 4th at 12 noon at Dock and Foundry Street in the Third Ward. We'll be back to talk more about this great event right after these messages. At Complete Care, we are patients serving patients. I choose to bring myself and my children to Complete Care because we are a one-stop shop. We use dental, we use medical. I feel as though the quality of care here is great. I love working here. I feel great to work at a place that serves the community. There's a lot of people in need. To me, patients, serving patients means we've been in your shoes. We know what great care means to us, and we want to provide that for you.
Insurance, we're proud to have been serving our customers for nearly 80 years, offering 30 different insurance products for your auto, home, and business. And to help ensure that you're getting the best rates possible, we give you up to three quotes for every policy, so you can choose what's right for you. At Mintz, we're part of the community, local representatives, supporting events, and proud of it. It's part of who we are. Mintz Insurance. Call today and find out how we can help you save on insurance or visit us at mintzinsurance.com. I chose the Marco Luisi Funeral Home because they treated me with respect and compassion. I couldn't have gone through all this if I didn't have the Marco Luisi by my side. They did everything that they could to make me happy. And that was important to me and my kids. At the DeMarco Luisi Funeral Home, we're here for you and your family in your time of need. Welcome back to Around South Jersey. Today, we've got John and Lisa Dingle as our guests from First Assembly of God Church. And they put together a program called Hope Day. And I know, Lisa, I'll let you go ahead and take over because George, our producer, is going to show some of the great slides of things that happened in the past year or two. Okay, we can narrate a little bit. Yep, so those are two of our volunteers from our church with our Hope Day banner. And we, we love that everybody, we all try to wear red. We wear the Hope Day t-shirt or a red shirt just to represent the unity as we all come together to love our city. And there's Mrs. M's books with their program to promote literacy in our town. And some of the resource materials that we provide at our connections tent as people come through. There are some folks from First United Methodist and they put together some um, hygiene kits to give out. Yeah, it was a little bit rainy last year, but <laughs> it's usually rain or shine as long as it's safe. <laughs> oh, there's a kid's And there's stuff. the kid's zone. That's neat. With rise and shine. But, uh, our first year, we were able to distribute new shoes. Wow. Um, Al's Shoes in Vineland also provided a lot of donations that year. He's a good friend year. of mine. He's a mm -hmm. great guy. We have face painting. Kids always love that. Yeah. <laughs> there's always lines. We were able to offer haircuts the first Jeez, year. I need one, um, too. We we, but we don't have anything set up this year unless there's any uh, barbers that are listening who are licensed and would like to donate their time in that afternoon. Let me know. <laughs> and there's the kid zone. Wow. That, it was a rockin' kid zone in year one. Amazing. <laughs> I think that was in our, our meeting beforehand. Oh, Everybody right, getting Kenyan. ready. Yeah, Pastor yeah. Kenyon, Pastor Tim. I think those are the kids from Rise and Shine, and those kids worked so hard. It's amazing how it all comes together that day, and everyone just unified and focused and ready to love our city. And I also wanted to add to the city of Millville, of course, is, has been very supportive, and they, you know, and with getting our permit each year, and just, you know, um, often, you know, the mayor and the commissioners, commissioners are often out to like give some support as well. Um, the police department, everyone, mm -hmm. and the, the recreational department, we, we appreciate just everybody working together. They cut the lawns and get everything yeah. ready for us that week and provide, you know, trash removal and tables and chairs and stuff that we need. So it's really amazing how it all comes together. Yeah, it really is. And, of course, for Millville set history, we have our first woman mayor. Have you met Lisa yet? No, not yet. She's I hope very, to meet her at Hope Day. Very <laughs> Well, she's got the same right, first name there, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> she's, she's a very nice lady. She really is. So I'm sure she'll come out. And Ben Romanick, whose grandfather was a city commissioner for over 20 years, and uh, he'll, you know, I'm sure he'll be there as well. Bobby McQuaid, I'm sure you see Bobby does a lot of the pickup of televisions and things if oh, you're yeah. on Facebook, I and he's one that. of the commissioners as well. So I suspect they'll be out there, which is nice to give the support. And uh, Samantha Cruz is the one who coordinates yes. everything with the recreation, and that's uh, Ben Romanek's department now. Mm -hmm. So it's it's good that they'll be there, you know, to help out. And you know, it's so nice because getting the community together. It's and you, what I see too from First Assembly and from New Life and from the Nazarene and most of the churches anymore is, it's not, you know, like when I grew up, you were Catholic, you didn't dare go to the Methodist church or you didn't do this or whatever, you know, and it's so wonderful to be able to go 
to the different churches and to meet people, see people, learn lessons, and you know, enjoy the opportunity for fellowship. Which is what I love when I you know go to the churches and see all the people that are there, caring and helping. And you know, it's been wonderful. Now, how many years was Reverend Kenyon here? Wow. He came here, if I'm correct, in 1957 on Memorial Day weekend. Okay. And so was that um, 65 years? Yeah. Did I have that right? And yes, so, you do. Yeah, that's good. You did well in math. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got Miss Dreyer at our church. That's so right. I'm, I'm you better. better. <laughs> yeah. She's checking in. John, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> what did we say it was? <laughs> what did you say? Uh, years. Uh, 65, 65 years. years. Well, you only have 60 more to, to catch up. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. <laughs> thank God you're 30, so you'll be 65 <laughs> yeah. when you get there. <laughs> but it, it, he's amazing as we talked about that opportunity. Yeah. So when you were – your last church was in Virginia? We were uh, youth pastors and worship pastors in Virginia. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. At the Assembly of God Church? Yeah. Now, did you both grow up assembly with the Assembly of God? I did. Uh -huh. And uh, Lisa grew up Methodist. I had a more and, uh, Methodist background. Then we got married. I guess I married in. <laughs> <laughs> well, even, both of them are pretty darn good places, that's for sure. So that's nice that, uh, you know, you were able to do that. And did you always think you wanted to be a minister, Joe? No. When I was in high school, I was very involved in the music program there. Oh, yeah. I was a trumpet player. I played the keyboard. And my big dream back then was to be a high school band director. Oh, wow. Like Rob DeSantis here yeah. in Noville. He's great. Yeah. And uh, to have a marching band that competed and be, you know, be everything that I dreamed it would be. And my senior year of college at Westchester University, I felt the call of God oh, into wow. ministry there. So I finished my music degree, and that's why. Um, music has always been a part of you know our ministry, my ministry, and so yeah, that sort of works out nicely, doesn't it? Yeah. With what you're doing as a pastor, you can also offer the great music that the church provides that people really enjoy as well. So that's pretty interesting. To, and you know, you mentioned about the you know, being a band director, and of course, I know you know Rob DeSantis is phenomenal, and the band's done so well. Do you go to some of the events too? <laughs> We went to the local competition mm -hmm. this past fall, right. and uh, we supported them. And you know, we have some of our students from our church who are involved uh, in the band program. And of course, our daughter is in high school, getting ready to graduate, and so she has friends that are in the band. Uh -huh. and, and so there's there's some connections there for us, and we've got to meet you know uh, Rob DeSantis and. Uh, just a great guy. He is, yeah. So thankful for his leadership. Now I guess I have to ask who's who's at uh, Lakeside. Our son, Ryan. All right. Now, that's right. You did say Ryan. And that's your middle name, Ryan. So yeah. That's right. <laughs> now, does Ryan play music? That's the reason I was getting Well, yeah, Ryan, he, he plays music, but not in any organized group. He loves to play the percussion, you know, the drum set. Uh -huh. And uh, he's self-taught and, you know, in my opinion, as a – as a music educator, you know, mm -hmm. you know, on the side, he's, he's, he does really well. Will he participate in a band percussion? Well, that's to be seen. We we encourage that, but okay. uh, well, it, tell him we'll put him on TV. You know? I think that's part of the issue. Is I think he'd prefer to just to you know oh. be behind the scenes. Okay, well, so. he could wear yeah. a mask. He likes, to, he likes to work the cameras, like you know, at church. He likes oh, to be behind super. the scenes, behind the cameras. That's oh, sort okay. of his. His vibe. <laughs> well, as long as he's happy, that's what's important, that he enjoys what he's doing. And he could get in his own group, I guess, sometime and, you know, develop it to a mm -hmm. local yeah. band that he'd like to play in. But that's really good. So um, as we get back to the Hope Day activity, it's June 4th. It's at 12 noon. Is there any pre-registration? There isn't any pre-registration, oh, not for the guests of honor. Uh -huh. um, for those who are helping, you know, and on the volunteer side, there is, um, we do, you know, request, um, I have an online sign-up sheet for volunteers just so we can try to be as organized as possible, you know, for that day. But yeah, they can just come. We don't, we don't take any information, you know, at, you know, at the gate when they uh -huh. come. Right. Um, you know, as they come through, um, we do, you know, offer to pray for them as well as they're on their way out because many people, you know, are hurting and need hope and have a lot of needs and often really don't mind at being asked for prayer. And so we we do, you know, offer that on their way out as well. And they also receive you know, bags of free groceries. Oh, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, speaking of that, I volunteer with the homeless program 
and I've met some wonderful people there that just are down on their luck and have had difficulties. And of course, as you have here, there's a lot of wonderful volunteers there too that help with you know the people's needs and, and everything. Thank God the weather's gotten nicer. It's not you know 10 degrees below zero or whatever. So, mm -hmm. but I really enjoyed that. And they have a program. Denise Arrigo, who's a good friend of mine, she put together a luncheon program called mm -hmm. Care and Share Meals for the homeless during the you know the whole year and stuff like that. I guess what I'm saying is when I look around Millville, you know, you guys exemplify all of the good things of helping people, your fellow neighbors and you know, it does even with this, it's not just your church people. In fact a lot of your church people I'm sure are coming out volunteering mm -hmm. that are to help this. Mm -hmm. So it's more giving out to the community, which I really like what you're you know, and you did talk about the Nazarene Church, uh, mm -hmm. First and then, United Methodist, New Life, right. mm -hmm. and there's also new neighbors at, um, at the church down the street um, from the field. I don't know what street that they're on, but a New Jerusalem Baptist Church is a new, newer church in Millville. Oh, okay. Um, That's good. Yeah, so. yeah. And I think you're right. You know, For us, Hope Day is an annual event, but there are so many good things that are happening in Millville that happen on a regular basis, yes. and we recognize yeah. that. You know, we're here, you know, once a year providing providing this, and, and we want it to be impactful, and we want it to meet needs, but we do tip our caps to all the sure. all the good ministries yeah. that are out there doing wonderful things. Well, yeah. certainly, oh, this, is, this is fabulous. I mean, this is something I'm sure a lot of children, kids look forward, and moms and dads, too, every year. I mean, the kids' zone and, you know, all the fun entertainment. Do you have music that... Uh, the groups play or we did the first year oh. and uh, I don't know if we have any at this point lined up for but uh, we may have just you know some like a playlist that plays right, the background sure. but they'll like definitely be music fun, upbeat yeah. you know exciting right. music yeah, yeah. So, yeah. give them yeah. something positive to look fun, forward to and have atmosphere. a great great time as well being there but folks if you're not familiar you know where 7-eleven is on high street that's mm -hmm. foundry street so it's one, two, three blocks down. It's the 100 block, and then of course that borders Dock Street and Arnold Drive, and Archer Street mm -hmm. and Foundry, Foundry, Archer. All of those so I should know the streets growing up there <laughs> pretty much most of my life, and it was uh, a really nice neighborhood at the time. In fact, it's interesting. On the corner, uh, across from the field, is the Eagles. The Millville Eagles mm -hmm. have their. Uh, facility there it was on high street where they had all the problems and stuff so uh john's bar was there at one time and then john sold his liquor license off so he let the eagles have the building probably mm -hmm. for very little amount of money but again there's i mean there's groups too you talk about people that do things mm -hmm. if you need anything call the millville elks mm -hmm. i mean i had a young man poor guys in his maybe early 30s he fell off a roof and is paralyzed from his waist down wow so he's in a motorized wheelchair, and he he didn't work anymore. He called the Millville Elks, came over, took care of it for him. Uh, I know one time I didn't think about it. I had was hospitalized, and I needed a hospital bed. And somebody said, "Just call Rob Shannon. Millville Elks will bring you one." And they do so many wonderful things. Mm -hmm. And that's where we are lucky. I mean, look around in mm -hmm. the city of Millville, all these groups and everybody, they're all pulling together. And that's what I think makes Millville such a special place that, that all your people that are out there saying, you know, yes, love the unity. And, uh, you know, and then this is a good point. Samantha Cruz is priceless. She yes, really she is. is to yeah. Millville. In mm -hmm. fact, I want to mention I was I had the honor um, a couple days ago, uh, Saturday, actually, of going over to Terry Pangburn's home. And Terry is uh, Samantha's stepfather. And uh visiting with Terry. Unfortunately, Terry is not in doing really well physically, mm -hmm. but what a wonderful man. He's the one who started the Millville Memories program that I love, that I grew up in Millville, on Facebook, and was one of my best guests and everything, but uh, he's struggling right now. So say a prayer for Terry Pangburn, if you would. I'd really appreciate that. We're talking with John and Lisa Dingle from the First Assembly of God Church, which is a beautiful mm -hmm. church over on Wheaton Avenue. And we'll be back with more talking about Hope Day right after these messages. I'm Brian Lankin, third generation business owner. Al Shoes, been at the same location since 1961, our 61st year. We specialize in work boots, work shoes, orthopedic shoes, baby walking shoes, 
school shoes. We go up to a men's 17 and a woman's 13. It's $5 off 25 and 10 off 100 if you mention that you've seen this. More than a century ago, General Tire was born right here in America. Since then, we've made a name for ourselves by making tires you can depend on. Tires built to handle any road this country can throw at them and relied on by every kind of driver. So you know that no matter where life takes you, with General Tire, anywhere is possible. At Complete Care, we are patients serving patients. I choose to bring myself and my children to Complete Care because we are a one-stop shop. We use dental, we use medical. I feel as though the quality of care here is great. I love working here. I feel great to work at a place that serves the community. There's a lot of people in need. To me, patients, serving patients means we've been in your shoes. We know what great care means to us and we want to provide that for you. Welcome back to Around South Jersey. Today, we're with John and Lisa Dingle about talking about Welcome to Hope Day, which is June 4th. And that's, a, here, what a great day to go out there. What hours, it starts at 12 and mm -hmm. how 12 long? 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. 3 p.m., mm -hmm. okay, that's good because if you want, then you can go home and get all freshened up, put your, well, you get the red on anyway, and head up and see Mike <laughs> Trout play at the Phillies. Oh, okay. Yeah, that night that. he's playing um, yeah. 7.15 at Citizens Bank Park. And uh, there's another wonderful person who has exemplified the good things that Millville has. He runs a golf tournament for the uh, Thunderbolt Club and raises over $100,000 for, oh. and the money goes to student athletes for scholarships, which is, you know, again, a, a great thing that, uh, this was funny. His dad, Jeff, uh, 25 years ago, uh, Jeff Trout and my, and uh, Jim Parent, Joe uh, Dorella, John Hollingshead, and myself, we were elected to the city commission. I was the mayor. Jeff was second and so forth. We just had a show the other day talking about how things have changed. It was funny. 25 years ago, the downtown looks like it does today, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And then about eight, five, seven or eight years into it, we were back to 95% occupancy. But I had the idea with the group of people to bring the arts district in, and that seemed to work. And we were able to draw some restaurants. I don't know if you guys would, probably not. Winfields and mm -hmm. Andreas were really super restaurants. Brought those in and some other good things, and we were on a good roll. But then, unfortunately, it wasn't just because I wasn't in office anymore. It's the economy, as mm -hmm. you know. We know the COVID, with yeah. the, you know the gas prices, the inflation, and all that yeah. stuff. Hey, I got to tell you guys, to remember this now. And <laughs> you got four of you, right? Mm -hmm. The house, mm -hmm. the Queen Restaurant in Landis Avenue in Vineland. It's mm -hmm. uh, the northeast corner of Lincoln and Landis. They're one of my advertisers, but I'll tell you, I love this deal. They put together two full course dinners for $25. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and they, it's like a dozen items, turkey and chicken parm and all kind of stuff. But what's neat with it is you get soup or salad, the dinner with vegetable, and you get dessert on top of it for twelve fifty. Right, so I said, that helps fight inflation. That's for darn <laughs> sure. Have you guys ever helps. gone to Furnace? Play oh, yeah. Oh, we have. Yeah. yeah, there's yeah. another great mm -hmm. place. Yeah, we love Furnace. Yeah, I do, too. I love for meatloaf and turkey and <laughs> all those good things. So, yeah. anyway. Yeah. Now, speaking of that, the lunch, who provides the lunch or how do you work um, That's a in, in combination of, of us <laughs> working together with the Salvation Army. They're providing um, – the, the canteen truck to, oh, okay. to, to gotcha. cook the hot dogs and serve them and their department of health certified that's right. important yes you know and so we will be um, providing hot dogs and the buns and all oh, that goes good. with it um and uh, snacks and bottled water for lunch for everybody that's super who's there that day for the volunteers and the guest of honor and boy they do a fabulous job too salvation are my goodness yeah. they give out 
hundreds and hundreds of turkeys at Thanksgiving time. And yeah. Again, a lot of great volunteers who I know mm-hmm. that work up there. And again, it comes back. That's our common thing. That we have so many wonderful volunteers. But uh, so yeah. tell us a little bit more about the day of the event and what people need to do and can do. Yeah, um, for those who want to help and be a part of it, um, from starting early in the morning, 8 o'clock, um, we will start setting up. And we do, as you can actually see in that picture that's behind us, you can see that you know orange construction fencing. And we actually sort of set up the fencing to just create structure to the day so that people can see where they're going and what they're doing. Um, and that's you know a lot of work to set that up and then we also have the circus tent that we will be you know putting up so wow. set up is from you know 8 till 12 and oh, um just right. and then you know everybody coming in the tables and chairs and tents and everything so that's the setup time and then the event is from 12 to 3 and then you know clean up afterwards um up until that point we you know we are collecting donations if people want to help if people want to donate cases of water or you know boxes that are full of those individual sized snack bags um or make a monetary donation towards the event they can go to our church website you know it's millville.cc and just go to give and make a contribution there's like a drop down box and they can select hope day because sometimes people are on the side of they want to give they want to help they want to be a part of something um and if they want to help you know serve the community that day they can reach out to us they can call um the church and i'm blanking on the church number oh (laughs) church number 856-825-0055 so 825-0055 or they can email me they can email me at lisa um, at millville.cc so a couple ways they can reach out to us if they want a few more details and get involved i like your website millville.cc that's really cool yeah, it is. You know. Just try to keep it simple. It is. Yeah, it's easier to remember. <laughs> this was funny when I was putting mine together. I wanted just quinbroadcasting dot com, and I couldn't get it because some you know, somebody else had it. So mine is so long. It's quinbroadcastingnj dot com. So that's a, oh. long, it's a mouthful <laughs> to be able to do that as well. But you know, how many volunteers? I mean, I look at that. You must have seventy, yeah, sixty. I, wow. I feel like last year we had about. 30 to 40. Uh-huh. Um, I know in year one in 2019, we had about like 80 volunteers. Okay. So um, so it'll be interesting. You know, each year has its own, you know, to survive, you know. Yeah, so that's true. With yeah. everything that's been changing yeah. over the years. So I think this year will bring, you know, new opportunities and new connections. And we're excited to see, you know, how the day will go. The grocery giveaway, mm-hmm. where do you get the groceries? Is that those groceries are going to be from um, the Hope Day Network. We oh, actually oh, um, the, right. and the Convoy of Hope. They provide those groceries, um, so we go and actually pick those up. They're non-perishable items. We pick those up on Friday, the day before, and they're already pre-bagged in grocery bags. Oh, that's super. Um, and I actually. I just got an email today. We have a new community partner joining us, the Food Bank of New Jersey. Oh, that's will be super. joining us. Glad and I think to hear they that. will be providing um, just more of like a resource table um, this year. So we also you know welcome them as well. Yeah, that's great. That really is. If we, you know, jokingly when I was talking about like the Queen Diner fighting inflation, even twelve fifty for some of those people is a lot of money. Um, you know, I guess the nice thing is that the food is there for the people and you know on top of it with the inflation the prices have gone up on you know things that you normally would buy at the market and stuff so these donations are probably 20 percent more valuable than they were last year because of the inflation that mm. we're all yeah. dealing with and yeah. 450 at the gas pump and mm-hmm. you know all that it's going on it's really been tough yeah. it's tough on everybody and different churches are giving away different things like i know at, at our church we're collecting um baby diapers and wipes oh, that's you know, super. to have right. on hand yeah. i know one church is going to be doing you know hygiene kits another church is going to be doing um like towel sets mm-hmm. um seniors for life from our church is giving away socks oh, that's there's nice. like a lot of different you know giveaways and practical things that people can use mm-hmm. we got shoes this year we we talk, we're going to see about that we're okay. going to say <laughs> when we were talking when the commercials was with al um al shoes in vineland brian lankin and I know he gave some the last mm-hmm. time around. Mm-hmm. What well, to give you his number? We'll make sure yeah. we're on the call. Yeah. <laughs> what a wonderful man too! Mm-hmm. You know, he's given away thousands of pairs of shoes, and oh, you know. But again, that's what it's all about. And and like even with Brian, you got a person like that that's supporting the community, supporting the people who truly yeah. need us through a wonderful program, the Hope Day. 
And, you know, when you get ready to go buy shoes, maybe you ought to go give him a little business because knowing whatever he gets, some of that he's going to give back to organizations like the yeah. Hope community. And I would encourage if there's any, you know, business folks out there that, you know, you're not sure about Hope Day or what it is, you know, feel free to stop by for a few minutes or an hour. Yeah, good point. And, and come and check it out. And maybe, you know, that would encourage you to, you know, find a way to get involved in the future because we would always – and welcome, you know, new community partners to be on board with Hope Day. You know what, to um, one of my former Little Leaguers, who is a very successful barber, Christian Tipton, who has the place here at High and Pine Street, maybe I'll try to get a hold of him to see if he or one of his people could come out that day. Although there's, yeah, there was another person, maybe JT might know, there was another guy out on 6th and, 6th and Sassafras, I think, and he also would do that from time to time as well. I hit my own hair stylist up, but she's been having <laughs> trouble with her knees. Oh, no. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, but I mean, again, there's you know a lot of people, as you mentioned, all the ones that are out there that want to help and give yeah. back to the community. So this is this through the Assembly of God, or is this like the Hope Day started with that? Yeah. Hope yeah. Day started through the Assemblies of God. Uh -huh. That one particular church that uh, Lisa mentioned earlier on in uh, in New York, um, and Convoy of Hope comes out of the Assemblies of God. But the heart behind Hope Day itself, though it comes from the Assemblies of God, is to gather you know churches together. Um, that's why we wear the red T-shirts. Is so you know you don't see this church's T-shirt and that yeah, church's right. T-shirt. It, it's, yeah. it's just Hope Day because yeah. we want people to just to see, you know, a group of caring individuals, you know, distributing hope, you know, to whoever needs it. Well, you know what, John, I wanted to ask you, do they still have the Millville Ministerial Association? Yeah. That, when I was the mayor, that was my favorite place to go. Mm -hmm. I just loved being with all of the men and women that were there. They were, and again, what we're talking about now, how can we help lift up the community? What can we do as our church and our parishioners at our church and mm -hmm. things like that? And this was an interesting story. Mm, geez, it's been back in the early 2000s. Millville had blue laws on Sunday. I'm not really a drinker, so I don't care what the laws are, but they had the blue laws where you couldn't start serving alcohol till maybe like 1 o'clock. So that way they figured at least churches were over and stuff. Well, um, Texas Roadhouse had a liquor license, and they were, wanted to open in Millville. But in order for them to have their franchise and to be able to open, they had to follow their national hours, which was 11 to whatever, 10 at night or something. So I had to go to the Ministerium Association and ask them for their blessing. And I said, I don't expect you to endorse this, but please let this means a lot to the city economically for, you know, a million dollar facility and all that. And they were great about it. They mm -hmm. really were. So, I mean, they're cooperative. They're, they have common sense, to, you know, all the people that we were dealing with there. And, mm -hmm. you know, of course, Reverend Kenyon was there from the day it started and <laughs> still yeah. active with the great things. And it's so nice to see that you guys have a good relationship with Pastor Kenyon and then the people still, you know, love to come. And like you said, he's the Energizer Bunny. He's <laughs> yeah. all over the place. He's it's going. At. So, John, what do you like to do for fun? I like music. to golf. I like oh, to play you? music. I like to read. Um, I'm working on a, another degree right now. Oh. So I'm back in school. And so those are just a couple of little hobbies that keep me busy for sure. Yes, so. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your other degree? Um, right now I'm working on a Ph.D. in organizational leadership. Wow. That's fantastic. Yeah. That is really great. So, Lisa, what do you do for fun except give everything away and help everyone? <laughs> I don't know. I'm more, I've been working on that. He, he's always on me about trying to find more hobbies. <laughs> you know, but I, I will say during the pandemic, I discovered that I liked puzzle, doing puzzles. Oh, I think because we were just, like, inside so much. Yeah. And um, But I don't know. I think life is so full with – I, I do work full time in, in yeah. a social work field. Oh, that's fantastic! Um, yes, yeah, so I have a full time job separate from you know being a full time um, minister's wife. Too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, so right. um, wow. and family and everything. So yeah, no, you've got um, children playing with our dog and mm. taking care of our family and. You got a busy schedule. It <laughs> yeah. is. It Lisa is, has an amazing capacity just to handle so many details. I'm constantly amazed at her ability and her willingness to do all that she does. Yeah, actually, well, that's you. my contact with the church. Mostly Lisa's letting me know things and whatever you need or whatever we're trying to do to make things better. And it's social. so with the social work, do you go 
out into the people's homes or they well, come my to master's you? is in counseling psychology oh my gosh but, um but i um so i started out working in counseling mm -hmm. um and many people are familiar with robin's nest yeah sure and it's yeah. recently um changed its name and had a merger and now it's ascenda integrated health oh, um I so that. i um i work with that company and um, I work in, as a supervisor in a um, supportive housing program, actually, oh, that I provides um, wraparound services for um, for families who receive housing vouchers to prevent um, being separated due to homelessness. Oh, that's nice. So, yeah, so, yeah, so yeah, I really yeah. I really love it. We have a friend of mine who has the counseling degree, but he's also a full-time guidance counselor. And he said, Jim, he had 19 count people that he was counseling. He said there's 19 hours a week. He's working 40 hours a week at Delcy as a school uh, guidance counselor. Mm -hmm. So he's fine. He had to cut his numbers down. But I yeah. guess my point is, as you know, there is such a need for for, call, for counseling, you know, yeah. really for psychologists. It's just unbelievable. I don't know whether if the – and you may have seen the numbers jump for maybe because of the pandemic and, you know, the difficulties of the kids being at home and yeah. all those things. Our world is, was upside down for a while, hasn't it? A yeah. lot of stress. Yeah, of it totally has been for sure. It's the – it's times are different, but at least the good point is we're still coming together. You're bringing people together and the, all the, you know, the churches that are helping out and, you know, again, the city and everybody that's coming out for the uh, community event. It's called Hope Day. It's absolutely free. <clears throat> it's June the 4th and it's at uh, Dock and Foundry Street in the Third Ward. And again, to just if you're on High Street, it's where 7-Eleven is. It's a couple of blocks down from there. It's a big open, it's got to be several acres there of mm -hmm. land. That's mm -hmm. where it was 101 unit uh, Millville Gardens uh, pro uh, housing project that had, like I said, gone down a little bit. We had an awful lot of problems there with the crime and all that stuff. So it's nice that you folks are using that because I always worried what's, what's going to happen. And I guess there are some others that mm -hmm. also you know, come over from time to time and utilize that at maybe Police Athletic League. Do you guys by any chance know Rick Cott? He's the head of the police athletics, yeah, He's a police officer. Yeah, I've, I, I <clears throat> think I've heard about him and had some emails and attempts at different uh, points. But, yeah, I've been wanting to connect with him. So Welcome out. <laughs> Thursday night, he's going to be my guest at the New Jersey Motorsports Park. Hey, oh. they have great values, too. 10% mm -hmm. off for Cumberland County residents. Mm. On, and their food is fabulous. And, like, I get <clears throat> this salmon salad. It's $14. But it's, oh, my goodness, their food is really, really good. But you can see I like food. So hey. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you, <laughs> this was, But anyway, Rick was named the person of the year last year awesome. for uh, – the city of Millville and, you know, for the Chamber of Commerce and really good guy. <clears throat> In fact, he just got on the uh, school board. He was appointed to the school board when Bobby McQuaid moved up from the school board to Millville City Commission. So he's a good person as well. We'll be back to wrap up our program with Lisa and John Dingle from the First Assembly of God. We're talking about Hope Day, a great free community event on June 4th, 12 noon at Dock and Foundry Street in the Third Ward in Millville. Back in a moment. At Mintz Insurance, we're proud to have been serving our customers for nearly 80 years, offering 30 different insurance products for your auto, home, and business. And to help ensure that you're getting the best rates possible, we give you up to three quotes for every policy, so you can choose what's right for you. At Mintz, we're part of the community, local representatives, supporting events, and proud of it. It's part of who we are. Mintz Insurance. Call today and find out how we can help you save on insurance, or visit us at MintzInsurance.com. I chose the Marco Luisi funeral home because they treated me with respect and compassion. I couldn't have gone through all this if I didn't have the Marco Luisi by my side. They did everything that they could to make me happy. And that was important to me and my kids. At the DeMarco Luisi funeral home, we're here for you and your family in your time of need. I'm Brian Lankin, third generation business owner, Al Shoes, been at the same location since 1961, our 61st year. We specialize in work boots, work shoes, orthopedic shoes, baby walking shoes, and school shoes. We go up to a men's 17 and a woman's 13. It's $5 off 25 and 10 off 100 if you mention that you've seen this. 
More than a century ago, General Tire was born, right here in America. Since then, we've made a name for ourselves by making tires you can depend on. Tires built to handle any road this country can throw at them, and relied on by every kind of driver. So you know that no matter where life takes you, with General Tire, anywhere is possible. Welcome back to Around South Jersey. My special guests are John and Lisa Dingle from First Assembly of God Church in Millville. And I don't know how Lisa does all she does when I find out this lady's a therapist, she's running social work, she's taking care of everything. Have you always been a busy go? You, you sound like you're the female version of the Energizer she, Bunny. <laughs> she may not say it, but she's always been you know, involved and willing to jump in and just gives, gives, gives. And so you know, I, I, I have a front row seat to watching how – giving she is boy what a great team though that you two make you know to for the church i mean they they get two for one two for the price of one <laughs> which is good yeah I, I, now that we're on tv they're going to find out that she's the uh, the lion's share of that two for one deal and so <laughs> and so yeah <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I, I got you. I understand what you yeah. mean. Yeah. It means that you're the better half is what oh, it means. Okay. <laughs> yes, I did read that into that, but I think both of you are pretty darn good. So <laughs> The um, the Kid Zone, that's set up with basketball that I see. Um, other... Yeah, JT is going to be doing like a basketball, um, do, doing some sports, some kickball, dodgeball kind of games. Oh. And then the Kid Zone is going to be more um, rise and shine, um, creates that Kid Zone, and there will be things like face painting, oh, yeah. you know, like the little, like, ta you know, yeah. the wash away tattoos, um, like, um, I'm trying to think of some other little games that they do, painting nails and oh, like nice. you know um, games, um, bouncy houses, those kinds of oh, things. Okay. So sort of like too. you know the yeah. kids can go in there and just do all of their their kid stuff. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> wow, so. I'll tell you what though, you guys start at eight o'clock in the morning, right? Getting everything set up where you can see that's four hours before the event. And then after the event's over, I'm sure you're putting in several more hours, right? So yeah. your day must be from 8 to 7, 8 yeah, to 6. Well, Teardown is always faster than set up. That's true, so, too. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it's just always amazing how it all comes together. And it's just mm -hmm. a tribute to everyone working hard and having a passion and being yeah. unified. Yeah, we have some people that come and they help us set up. And then mm -hmm. they they go back home, and then they come back and help us tear down. Like that's oh, they just nice. see that as their, their willingness to help, and so that's always welcome. Well, I just want to know. I don't know if this is correct grammar, but it sounds good. Pastor John and Lisa are the bestest. B e s t e s t. <laughs> that's pretty cute. <laughs> yeah, and all kinds of good comments coming in, and we thank you all for being with us and joining us. You know, with the program and. Most importantly, if you can, bring the kids out, bring the family, June 4th uh, at 12 o'clock, where Millville Gardens used to be on the Dock and Foundry Street, right in the heart of the Third Ward. And, uh, you know, you'll have fun. And you know what's nice, too? The kids will meet other kids. They'll be able to play with them. You'll be able to see people you probably haven't seen in quite a while. I know when I go mm -hmm. to my grandson's soccer events, I really enjoy it because I get to see a lot of the other grandparents that I grew up with, and yeah. you know, and, and you'll love this. And look at all those wonderful volunteers there. Mm -hmm. Wow, I mean that yeah. is something else. I mean, just I think it exemplifies what Millville is all about with great volunteers, and we're yeah. lucky to have the churches we have too. I mean, mm -hmm. yours is like one of the senior churches for Millville for a long, long time. Well, Kenya was here fifty-seven years, right? Or nineteen fifty-seven, yeah. right? Yeah, and he started at the uh, right next to us here at yeah. the old Gospel Lighthouse. Yes, and then moved over to Wheaton Avenue. And us being here only five years, you know, we're we're still learning. You know, yeah. who's been here and the heritage and the you know the different churches and the history. And it's uh, it's been a blessing. Yeah, and we were very fortunate in Millville to have the First Assembly of God Church for 62 years, I guess, or whatever it is. What would you say it was? 65 years, right? Yeah, yeah I think, the, but the old Gospel Lighthouse was here before Pastor Kenyon. Oh, I and see. So, okay. And uh, it, it, um, it eludes me now how long beforehand. He, if he was here, he'd know, like, right off yeah, the drop, right. Yeah. Yeah, drop of a hat. But, uh, but yeah, so Pastor Kenyon, 65 years. Wow, it's amazing. It is just wonderful, and I'm really very pleased, too, with what uh, 
John Murky does out to first the Nazarene Church. Mm-hmm. He's a mm-hmm. wonderful person. Of course, Rich Myers is a good friend of mine with New Life and what they do and how they you know reach out to the people and yeah. You know, and then of course First Methodist. He's fantastic. Uh, you know, just a, and what they did by combining First with Trinity, Trinity with First. Now they've made that all there available for the homeless, for the uh, food program, and all the things that they were able to do. So that's another great blessing that, you know, people have. And I'm sure there's others. I apologize if I I think of Newcomb Town, United Methodist Church, good people there, Mm -hmm. um, Fourth Methodist, and uh, you got St. Mary's in Millville. Trying to think, there must be some other. Oh, my cousin, my goodness, <laughs> dwelling place ministries, you know, mm-hmm. up here. Mm-hmm. In fact, they they were on recently. They're taking over the Presbyterian Church in Millville. That's over a hundred years old. So mm-hmm. that's a really pretty church. If you get to see the show, it'll be on from time to time. We have really great shots of the inside of that facility mm-hmm. and what a what a beautiful church. Although I like your church a lot, I like Reverend Myers and. Uh, and John Murkey's, they're all mm. more, a little more modern, but a lot of light, which is beautiful, and the stained glass, and you know all that. You, you've got a big, you've got a big area too, don't you, for social and stuff? I mean, yeah, we have a fellowship hall. It's called Kenyon Hall. Can you guess why? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I want to say we can fit about over a hundred people in there, you know, wow. for events and this main sanctuary, you know, between two hundred and three hundred people, you know. Before COVID, and now uh, right. we've spaced out a little bit, but yeah. yeah, and that's a beautiful sanctuary too. It really is. Well, you guys, I'm so proud of you for this Hope Day that's coming up. It's a free community event. It's got all kinds of stuff for the kids, music, grocery giveaway. You want to be there for that, folks. And uh, lunch, You're gonna have a great hot dog and all the dress, all the, the things that go on top of it, mm-hmm. and giveaways and so much more. Lisa, you're amazing. God bless you. Keep thank up you. the good work. Now we know the real story. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Jim, thank you so yeah. much. Nice to have you. Thank you for being with us. Our guests today have been Lisa and John Dingle from the First Assembly of God Church. We're talking about the great program that they're putting together June 4th, 12 noon, at Dock and Foundry Street, what used to be the Millville Gardens property. And you see the grocery giveaway, the kids' zone, the community services, music, fun and entertainment for the whole family. It's going to be lunch for everybody, recreation and games, giveaways, so much more. Celebrating community, bringing hope. And hope is what it's all about. It's Hope Day, and hope that you'll have a wonderful day, and it'll help you, uh, you know, do whatever you need to do, and hopefully maybe you'll be able to meet some people and maybe you'll be able to find a church you've been looking for. You're welcome to you know, talk to everybody there about what's happening in their facility. So once again, for Reverend uh, Dingle and uh, Lisa, I'm Jim Quinn. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, George Kachia, for producing the program. We'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye. This has been a QBC television production in association with our partners and sponsors. QBC broadcasts on Comcast Cable Channel 22 and live streams its programming on Facebook and YouTube. All rights reserved by Quinn Media and QBC, programming that serves the South Jersey market.